And if your GE ice maker keeps shutting off randomly after it gets so much ice made like this, it's probably overheating. One way to know if it's overheating, take a desk fan like this and lay it down and plug it in and let it blow into that air vent right there. Or into the air vent over here. If blowing a lot of air through it keeps it running, that means it's overheating. And that usually means either your condenser fans are clogged up with dust or your compressor is going bad. In the case of this unit, I'm pretty sure it's clogged up with dust. I've already actually done the repair, I'm kind of doing the video backwards, but there are different screws. So first you take out little rubber pieces that cover this and you just take a toothpick and pop them out. I didn't show that part. But these front screws are going into plastic and they use this smaller head longer screw like that. On the back it goes into metal and they use about the same size head but it's a shorter screw um, and both of those go in the back back corners. Okay. Uh, when you take this off which I did not reconnect everything yet. When you take this off, be careful because there's a circuit board underneath right here and that is connected to this guy right here. It's not a clip of any sort, you just gotta gently pull it out. If you got a small screwdriver, just wedge it out. But that connects to there. The front panel has two connectors and they connect to these two uh, receiving pins, I'd say, or whatever, you know, these two harness pieces. They're color-coded, so you can't screw that up. White goes in white, black goes in black. Removing the back cover is easy. It is all these sheet metal screws. Uh, same as the top corner here. And you've got um, nine of them total. So I've already pulled them out, but just that and then hit the thing just twist right off no big deal to get to get this guy off you just lift it up and pull out you can see the clips in the back so easy to do but it's important to note that you have two screws that are the same length and thread but they have different head sizes so this one's like that, and that one's like that. Let me see if I can get a better view of this for you. Okay, so I lined them up on the black plastic so you can kind of see. But you can see those different head sizes. This smaller one goes into this black top. This one goes onto the back panel, or that one corner. That's right here. Now, removing the outer cover is really easy, but you need to pay attention to this. The back right corner is a really short screw, this guy, with that washer. Okay? Then all the screws that go into plastic, so be this, these four, are long screws with the smaller head okay this back screw here that goes into metal is a short er not as short as the other one but a short kind of fat headed screw and the two in the front are really small screws similar to the one with the washer uh, but they don't have the washer and they go up here and here so make sure you're paying attention to that or you could potentially damage something to remove the fan it's just these four screws it comes right off along with its little uh, rubberized mount for vibration mine's in there backwards because I'd actually already taken it off and I'm putting it back on But 
what I've noticed is mine overheats and it stops making ice. Thought it was strange. This fan's working great, so it's not the fan. What I did notice is that when I pull this fan off of this uh, condenser, I believe is what that is, this fan now generates easily five times as much air as the second I put it on there. And that condenser is probably a little clogged up, but it's also choking off the fan. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip this fan like this on there like that and that is going to increase the amount of airflow through that condenser multiple times over and then I'm going to put a filter screen on the back side of that fan so it doesn't push a bunch of dust through there right now you can see right there it's already getting dust in there sucking it through versus pushing it in, you know, pushing it in, you'll get a little bit more, but not, not, a, not a dramatic amount more. So I don't see a big, huge difference there. So give me a minute. I'm going to turn everything off. I'm going to flip it around and we'll see if it still overheats. Now I spun the fan around, turn it back on. Um, it's just four screws. Real easy. Just spin it. And, uh, it seems to be pulling in more air. Um, the other thing I noticed was that the back, the back of my unit there had a large amount of dust caked on it. Um, and I blew it off as best I could from in here, but you can see how the fan is blowing the dust out of the inside of the unit now. Um, <clears throat> so, if anything, I prefer it the way it is now because if dust does cake on it, it'll cake on the outside where the fan's at versus on this back side back here. We can't really get to it. Anyway, and also it'll help cool the compressor. The compressor is a little bit on the hot side. It'll help cool it. Um, blowing air through that like that. It'll be a little warmer air but it won't be as warm as a compressor so it'll actually function for two purposes now so. so while I've got this opened up I'm in here with a toothbrush and I'm just cleaning the dust out of the back of it and as you can see it's pretty effective so get a relatively straight cheap toothbrush and go after the back side of that guy as best you can to clean it up Hopefully, that fixes this, and I no longer have to keep a desk fan next to it to keep it running. So, I will update you and let you know um, how things going. So, it's been running for quite a while now, and everything seems to be running great. Uh, flipping the fan over and cleaning that condenser and you know, the fins really made a big difference. Um, the air coming out of it is not near as hot on either side. It's just a little bit on the warm side versus it where it was pretty hot. And uh, as you can see it's working great.